All right, of course, very familiar face. Does our Saints on the Bayou, former NFL quarterback, Saints quarterback, Bobby Bear. Bobby, we were listening to Reggie Wayne over there for a long time, and he started bringing up about New Orleans, growing up in New Orleans, and, and listening to the Saints. He said the TV would go out, so we'd go listen to the radio, him and his dad, <laughs> and he started talking about quarterback Bobby Bear and Eric Martin and well, everything. He brought and that up. And so. He brought that up in, in front of everybody. So <laughs> you, you could see the wide-reaching effect that this game is having right. with a lot of players from the coach Peyton and Reggie Wayne. It ties it in pretty good, doesn't well, it? And you know what's crazy, Martin? If you just look around, and I always brag on Louisiana, you know, no matter who the Saints are playing, they got Louisiana studs on the other team. You know, per capita, Louisiana has the most NFL players. And you look at all the NFL rosters, some, they have one, two, maybe a handful of players that have, you know, Louisiana players. Especially look at the Colts, um, Reggie Wayne, uh, I mean, Peyton Manning, it, it doesn't get any better than that than Joseph Adai played at LSU. Right. No, I mean, it, it's unbelievable you see how well re Louisiana is represented throughout the NFL. For a guy like, and, and you quarterback, so I'm going to get you to compare Peyton Manning a little bit. For a guy like Peyton Manning, and I know he's all business, but he grew up in New Orleans, was in the Dome many times right. when his dad played. We saw him throwing stadium, yeah, yeah. passes on the sideline. What you think is going through his mind right now? Well, I mean, it's all business. Um, I'll tell you what, Peyton's not phased that he's playing, you know, the Saints. I mean, he's almost like a droid. Now, he is a human being. I mean, he plays at a level that's so robotic, it's unbelievable how efficient he is. But that's why you got to tattoo him. I'll tell you what, and you get a couple of personal foul penalties, so be it. But uh, come the end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, he is a human being. He will start feeling those hits like we did uh, with Kurt Warren and Brett Favre, but he is just truly amazing, and he's so focused, and he's so, um, you know, professional about his job and how he prepares. Him and Drew Brees are amazing, how they pay attention to detail, the intangibles that they have. No, it's basically um, one and one A when you look at, uh, you know, Peyton Manning and Drew Brees. I mean, you have franchise quarterbacks. To show you, uh, I mean, the consistency of both of them, after four seasons, they have the identical number of touchdowns, 122. Not even, number one in the NFL. Then you look at third down efficiency. They're right behind Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, you want to sustain drives, control the tempo, time of possession. They both have a third down efficiency rating of 102.9. They're the least sacked quarterbacks, so you know they're offensive lineman's best friend. You know, a lot of times when a quarterback gets sacked, you know, they always want to blame the line. No, the quarterback makes a big difference a lot of time as far as giving up sacks, and that ball's coming out uh, with uh, you know Peyton and uh, Drew Brees. They're unbelievable, their pocket presence and what they bring to the table. I want to bring Deke in a second, too, if I can. How you doing, Deke? All right, Martin. What's going on? All right, we've been hearing a lot about the Who Dat Nation, Bobby, all week long. Matter of fact, I tried to get Don Shula to do it, but he'd have no part of it. But I did get Chris Berman to do a little Who Dat, and he added his own little spiel. So... We've been stuck over here in Miami in the rain for three days. What's going on with the Houdat Nation? Because uh, it, it seems like the NFL's riled people up a little bit more. Hey, hey the Houdat Nation is alive and well. I don't know. Look what I have might be illegal. It says, <laughs> instead of Houdat, Drew that. No, I, I tell you what, the Houdat Nation, to show you, they know the party is going to be in New Orleans. I, I read somewhere, I think we were talking about the hotel occupancy is like 95% full. They got people coming into New Orleans realizing the Saints win. That's where they want to be. It ain't no, there's no party on South Beach. South Beach knows how to have a good time, but not on the level in New Orleans. That's why we're doing the pre and the post game. We're leaving on Friday to go back home. Because the Saints win, think about this, Martin. In less than a week after Super Bowl Sunday, Drew Brees is the king of Bacchus. And then you have the Orpheus Parade on Monday night. I'm going to float with uh, Coach Sean Payton and Reggie Bush. No, it's not no 48-hour party. It's a continuous party. You won't even think you're in the United States. It's like I tell people, you can think you're in Rio de Janeiro or Trinidad is going to be that crazy. Uh, the Saints come out on top. Just look at the, um, the, the, the Buddy D tribute that if the Saints ever go to the Super Bowl, wear a dress. I thought it would you know, get to have a good turnout. They estimated 80 to 85,000 people showed up. The parade was supposed to last two hours, go from the Superdome to the French Quarter. No, it lasted like three and a half hours. It was out of control. What made it so special 
you know, Mardi Gras, one, 1 1.2 million visitors come in. It was all locals. It was the base, the foundation of the Huda Nation celebrating the Saints going to the Super Bowl. Now, Dick, I want to bring you in because I, I want somebody from the outside to talk about that dress day. <laughs> because uh, we had our camera. He was actually dressed like me. Martin had a whole. Right. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to see the video. I was over here, but I right. did send a crew. But, I mean, what, what was that like, first of all? And, and I want to know, how many men showed up in dresses? Oh, if there were 80,000 people there, there had to be 30,000 people dressed in dresses. Yeah, yeah. yeah At it, least 30. Some walk in the parade, some right. not uh, marching in the parade. You know, like what, what made it so unique, though, was all the people that were there. Oh, it, you've seen a lot of people in New Orleans before for different events. Right. But when they have, uh, you know, go to the Mardi Gras with Professor Longhair, Hey Pocket Way, or Dr. John playing, the whole crowd was singing in unison, and they let you know that it was all New Orleans and, and all Louisiana people that were there and celebrating. It was, I never seen anything like it before. And we've been to some part big of folklore. You were right. Yeah. You said you didn't have any hair in your legs. No, no right. I, don't, I don't have any hair on my legs. And I tell you what, I, I banged my calves. I was showing my calves in the dress. Right. Look, my leg, my calves all bruised. I mean, I, 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 no, I, I, no, I, I, I need a little floor. That's no. not spill paint. That's designer shorts. He paid for that. Yeah, really? no, oh, yeah, he paid yeah, for uh, that. Chip and Pepper, I think, is one of those designers. But, but, but no, but, but listen, it looks like the sun's going to be out towards the latter part of the week because I need all this milky white legs. I need a little Florida sunshine to hit them. Oh, sure hopefully it looks like the rain has passed, Martin, and we'll get uh, beautiful weather for the Super Bowl week. All right, let's break it down. Peyton Manning's been here before. Uh, Drew Brees has gotten close, but right. it, it's a it's a whole new concept. But I got to tell you, the Saints look pretty loose right now. Yeah, they are loose. I mean, you can't make the game bigger than what it is. And I mean, is is the, is the championship. But you got to uh, put it in perspective. It's all about preparation. If you can do it in practice, you could do it in a game. Yeah. And that's the mindset you have to have. And we were talking about this on uh, Sports Talk last night. Uh, if you look at what Drew Brees can accomplish, what Peyton Manning can accomplish, I think maybe you could put this in, in better words. Right. But for Drew Brees, what he's done the last four years, to be in the conversation with Peyton Manning, with Tom Brady, you know, when you talk about Hall of Fame, he has to win a championship. Now what Peyton Manning is trying to achieve, to win multiple Super Bowls, because then he's going to have the numbers to, to be not only in the argument, but it's going to be hard to argue right. that he's not the best of all time. Right. So right. you got two different goals with these guys that are trying somebody, to achieve. Somebody's status will be elevated right. big after this one. You know, it's a conversation of being the greatest of all time or great in this era between Drew and uh, Peyton Manning. But you know what's interesting, though, Martin, is around here, there's a vibe that the Saints don't have a chance at all. And what's right. so unique about that is that People picked the Ravens to beat the Colts in Indianapolis. A lot of people picked the Jets, where the rookie quarterback has never been to the Super Bowl, to beat Indianapolis in Indianapolis. But the field here is that the Saints will have a chance to set a neutral field, and they got they got arguably the best quarterback in the game. Are so we okay with that, aren't we? Well, I mean, they the, the Saints have been the underdog, you know, yeah. all the time. So I, I think I think they relish 